So my previous foray into winemaking was a bit of an experiment. This time I wanted to do something that could be actually drinkable and potentially tasty. So today I'm making pineapple mango wine straight from a bottle of store-bought juice. Now there are recipes out there where they make it directly inside of the juice bottle, but I have some equipment on hand. So I'm gonna be fermenting in this glass fermenter that has a handy spigot on it so I don't have to do any siphoning. And it's got a hole in the top for the airlock. So it's really an all-in-one kind of system. Before I get started, I need to sanitize everything. So I'm gonna put the airlock inside of the fermenter, measure out the right amount of star sand. And fill it up with water. Which creates a whole bunch of bubbles. I'll screw on the lid, give it a good shake, so all the surfaces get in contact with that sanitizer. And I'm gonna use that spigot to fill up the cylinder that I'll be using to measure the alcohol content of the wine. After about five minutes, we can drain that out. I'll throw my airlock in the top of the lid. Fill it up with sanitizer. Then I can go ahead and add in the juice. This is just basic store-bought fruit juice. You could really use any kind of juice here, including grape juice, but that won't really yield the best grape wine flavor, since it's usually Concord grapes. So that's why I opted for something a little bit unique. So I'll be creating something brand new that I can judge against its own merits, rather than comparing it with some of the fancy wines that I like to drink. Now at this point I noticed that my fermenter had sprung a leak. That spigot has a rubber gasket on either side, but I think the curvature of the fermenter doesn't allow a tight seal. So fruit juice was slowly leaking everywhere. Luckily I still have my old school carboy, so I'll end up fermenting that instead. Now while the juice does have quite a bit of sugar on its own, that'll only yield about 5% alcohol for us, which is similar to the amount that's in a beer. But we can bump that up by adding a couple cups of sugar, which should yield us around 10 or 15%. And while yeast is totally happy to munch on sugar all day, we can help it survive a bit longer and do more work by giving it some yeast nutrient. We only need about a teaspoon of that. And to get an accurate reading of the potential alcohol in this wine, we gotta do some measurements beforehand. So I'm gonna mix all that sugar in to dissolve it. And then I'll pour some wine into the cylinder. Drop in my hydrometer, which has indicators on it for potential alcohol. And it looks like I should get about 11 or 12%. Not bad for a table wine. All right, now I'm good to prep my yeast. I'm using the same yeast as last time. It's called Lalvin D47. And it's a white wine yeast, which I guess is the flavor profile we're going for. I gotta dissolve that in a little bit of hot water. And then I'll add that into the juice. And that is a sticky creature. It did not want to go in. Well, once it's in, I'll add the airlock. And set that aside to ferment. Now, for me, it only took a few days for the initial rapid bubbling to subside, but I left it for a couple weeks because bubbling usually slows down to a very slow pace to the point where you can't really see it unless you watch it for a while. And after about two weeks, I decided it was time to rack it. You can see there's a bunch of yeast sludge at the bottom of the carboy. So I'll use this auto siphon to transfer most of the wine to a second container.
At the same time, I'll take a second reading with the hydrometer. And at this point, it should read zero because there's no potential alcohol left. It's all in the wine already. I clean and sanitize my carboy and transfer the wine back there. I like that it's clear so I can actually see when the sediment has fallen out and the wine clears up. And after a couple more weeks, I was satisfied with where it was at. Didn't seem like any more sediment was falling out. It looked pretty clear. So I transferred it to some sanitized wine bottles. And you could age this for any number of months or years. I'm not really sure what the benefits of aging a juice wine like this would be, if it's even necessary. In my case, I'm just gonna drink it as the opportunity arises. So I racked this a few times, and the last time I was looking at it, it was looking very clear. Then I had this in my fridge laying on its side, and it looks like when I picked it up, all of the yeast lees have started floating around. Kind of weird, but hopefully it doesn't affect the taste. We'll see. Hmm. Hmm. So it smells like the mango pineapple juice that I started with, but with the addition of alcohol, which is nice. Yeah, I mean, that has, it's hard to tell how much alcohol it has, but it tastes like it has a decent amount, definitely 10%, maybe 15%. And the flavor, that mango really comes through. <laughs> it really dried out quite a bit, all that sugar converted into alcohol. So it doesn't have that cloying sweetness that fruit juices can have sometimes. It's really refreshing, it's really nice. But I wouldn't say that it tastes like a wine. I wouldn't replace a Pinot Grigio or a Pinot Noir, either end of the spectrum, or a rosé with this. It kind of has the flavor profile of mango white claw. If you ever had that before, you know what I'm talking about. It's that mango flavor, but intensified, concentrated. So would I recommend this? Yeah, go for it. If you've got any fruit juices that seem interesting in your grocery store, try it out, see what you can make. At the very least, you can have some friends over and have some fun drinking some weird concoction that you made. And if you give it a try, let me know in the comments how it turned out. Don't forget to subscribe and become a patron, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.